that's very rare. I think that what we, what we tend to see are certain ideologies, certain beliefs permeate the field. And if you publish research or if you show research findings that are supportive of that ideology, you're much more likely to be published. Um, and if you go against the grain and you show research that challenges those views, you're much less likely to be published and much more likely to be held to a standard of science that probably most social scientists can't can ever reach. Oh yeah, so this uh, this is a I think a good thing to touch on, which you you've written a whole paper about, which is um, the the peer review is supposed to be the gold standard. Uh, I kind of like the market review myself, as in, can you sell it and does it have value to people else? But but the peer review in sort of the academic scientific community is considered to be the gold standard. But it also seems to me that the peer review, particularly in the more difficult to quantify, like the softer sciences outside of physics and, and math and so on, that it can be used for a very conservative kind of gateway to protect an existing edifice of thought rather than um, everyone. Be, everybody's got a bias. Everybody's got a self-interest. And of course, people who've invested their careers in a particular worldview are not always the most friendly to ideas that challenge that worldview. Do you think that it's possible that the peer review process can be used as a gatekeeper to keep uh, new ideas out of an existing structure? Absolutely. There, I mean, there, there's no doubt. I mean, I've seen it firsthand. I've heard from others um, that have experienced some stuff that's very similar. I mean, if you think about what what gives researchers in any particular discipline status is, is publications, but more than publications, it's publishing in top journals. And so what a lot of times, uh, you know, colleagues do is they'll evaluate how influential a researcher is or sort of, quote unquote, how good of a researcher is by looking at whether they publish in the, in the field's top journals. Well, what, who, who, are, who are the editors of these uh, journals? Well, sort of the big wigs, the big names, the more established folks in the field um, who have published sort of in this particular realm, whatever it, whatever it is that they published in, but they, they, they published in a way that allowed them to move their way up the food chain so that now they're the editors of these big journals. They're typically uh, more established, full professors that have been around a long time that have a, a solid publication record and that are highly respected. Well, what happens then when, when other researchers come in and try to publish research that may go, go against the grain, that may go against everything that these editors have published in their career, or that may go against the entire field's ideology? They're much more likely to, to, to sack that paper. Um, and and it, can, it can be sort of a hidden way of doing it. It doesn't necessarily mean that the editor is going to write you back and say this paper is bad for these reasons. But any, any topic that... that, that um, uh, researchers study. We we can identify people who are for that particular finding and, and those who are against it. So if you publish a study or you submit a, pay, a study for publication and it's testing theory A, whatever that theory might be, and it shows no support for that theory, an editor who ultimately selects the reviewers for that paper knows people who are for that theory and people who are against that theory. And so if you show no support for that theory, you could easily send that paper to three reviewers who are known uh, proponents of that particular theory and know full well that that paper is going to be sacked by those reviewers. So it sort of sets up this facade where uh, editors can say, well, we're, we're blind, you know, we're, we're, we're just following what these reviewers say, and these are expert reviewers on this topic, and they all came back and said this paper was flawed in these ways, and, and we just followed the reviewer's advice and, and, and didn't publish that paper. Um, and so it, it creates this facade or this mirage that, look, we're being objective editors, when in reality, we know that the editors are, are, are typically far from objective, at least within criminology, and that they have certain, uh, you know, beliefs, they have certain findings that, that they want to get published. And, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't take much to, to, to hear backstories about uh, an editor who likes this, or an editor who wants that, or an editor who's more open to publishing on this topic, or, or an editor that's more likely to, to, to publish a, a paper showing something that, that goes against the ideology. And, it, and, and so, yeah, absolutely. What we see in, in the social sciences in general, but particularly criminology, is is probably a very filtered view of what ultimately is, is submitted for publication and what ultimately comes out in terms of published research. Yeah, I mean, uh, because there's no end customer who is determining sort of the, the value of 
the material, uh, it is easy. like it, it, if the horse and buggy manufacturers got to decide whether the car got manufactured, they'd probably say no. Oh. But it's the customers who kind of override their decisions. But in this situation, there is no sort of third party customer who is thirsty for the information and will overthrow, in a sense, the biases of those defending an older or, I guess, um, more traditional way uh, of thinking. And I think that's one of the challenges when you don't settle for the end customer who can bypass the gatekeepers. Uh, I think the capacity or the uh, environment where this kind of subtle corruption can flourish uh, seems almost inevitable. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you think the stakes can be relatively high. Um, you know, there's limited page space for, for journals to publish research. And so if they're publishing on something that, 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 that's more controversial, they're not publishing stuff that, that, that's less controversial or that falls in line with, uh, with what most people believe. Um, you know, and if you think about the editors, most of the editors are well respected in the, in the field. Um, that's how they got elected or ultimately got to the position of being an editor. And what happens when when, when they're confronted with research that goes against them and what they believe and what, what many of their friends and colleagues believe. If they publish it, they may think, uh, whether correctly or incorrectly, that they're sort of putting their stamp of approval on it, and others will look at them and, and they'll lose that status. They'll, they'll lose the way that people uh, view them, um, and, 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 you know, it could be a cycle. Absolutely.